So what we are going to look at is functions f defined in a domain say r2 or r3 taking values in r. We want to look at, we want to analyze local maximum minimum of f. So to analyze that. Uh, let us first define what is local maxima minima for functions of two variables. So, definition. So, a point say A B belonging to D is called a point of local maximum. So, it is a sort of maximum says it is largest and local means in a neighborhood. So, if there exists some delta bigger than 0 such that the value of f at a b is bigger than or equal to value of f at x y for every point x and y in a neighborhood. So, let us write a ball around the point a b of radius delta. So, that is uh, local maximum and you can define similarly local minimum uh, if it is inequality is less than or equal to. So, local minimum at a b if all that as above f of a b should be less than or equal to f of x y for every x y in that neighborhood. Right. So, local maximum uh, the name itself says it is a uh, the, uh, the value at that point is largest in a neighborhood and minimum says it is the uh, smallest in that neighborhood. Right. So, the problem is uh, how do we identify points where the function has local maximum or local minimum and how do we uh, verify that and indeed uh, these are points of local maximum or local minimum. Right? So, let us for example, uh, let us look at some examples. Uh, the simplest would be for example, let us look at f of x y is equal to x square plus y square for every x y. So, geometrically if you look at this, uh, this is the square of the distance. Okay. So, uh, f at say 0 0 the value is 0 and uh, for every other point f of x y is bigger than or equal to 0 for every x y other than uh, of course, equal to the is strictly bigger than 0. Uh, is bigger than 0 for x y not equal to 0 0. So, clearly uh, 0 0 is a point of local uh, uh, is bigger than local so minimum. Can you visualize this geometrically? Right. So, what does it look like geometrically? So, geometrically if we try to visualize the graph of the function is uh, a surface okay? and uh, every section of the surface x square plus y square equal to some number right. If z is fixed 
then uh, this is a circle. So, it is going to be right, a kind of. So, that is the surface looks like, right. So, that is uh, and obviously, it has a minimum at the point 0, 0 geometrically also, right. So, here we are just looking analytically that uh, this is a minimum, right. For example, if you change f x y equal to minus of uh, x square plus y square for every x y, then it is just inverting this uh, surface. So, 0 0 is a point of local maximum at every point the value is less than or equal to 0 and 0 the value is 0. So, that is a point of local minimum right. So, f x y is less than 0 which is equal to f of 0 0 for every x y right, but that is not good enough uh, for us uh, these kind of examples we would like to know, find out. Like in, one, like in one variable, we said uh, if you want to find points of local maximum minimum, uh, we have got a condition that the derivative at that point must be equal to 0. So, that gave us that necessary condition gave us uh, a collection of points where possibly the function can have local maximum or minima, right. Those were the critical points. So, something similar can be done here. For example, let us look at uh, the following. So, let us write as a theorem. So, let f x y x y belonging to D have a local maximum or minimum at a point A B. So, suppose a function has we want to find a we want to find a, a necessary condition like function of one variable. So, let us uh, put this back on uh, put this back on uh, one variable. So, then the partial derivative at uh, the point a b with respect to x should be 0 and should also be equal to partial derivative with respect to y at the point a b if both f x f y exists. The reason for this is obvious that uh, if you have a function of two variable and it has a local maximum at a point then one variable fix also it is a point of local maximum right. If at a point the value is largest in a neighborhood right and if you fix one of the variables say x or y then as a function of one variable also it is a point of local maximum or local minimum at that point. And if the derivative exists with respect to x then the derivative by that theorem of one variable that should be equal to 0 and similarly with respect to y. So, proof is just saying that if a b is a point of say local maximum or minimum, then let us consider the function say x going to f of x x going to uh, varying x. So, x comma b right also has local maximum minimum at x is equal to a. Is that clear to everybody? That if uh, in the domain a b is a point in the domain where it has a local maximum say then in a neighborhood in that domain it is a point of 
So let us just uh, draw a picture and understand what we are saying. So this is the domain. and this is the domain d and this is the point ab where the function has uh, so f of ab uh, is local maximum so is bigger than or equal to f of xy for every xy in a uh, neighborhood so let us uh, draw a neighborhood so this is a neighborhood so in a neighborhood of radius delta for every xy belonging to ball at ab of radius delta right now if i fix if i fix the uh, uh, y equal to b and let x vary so y equal to b is fixed and x is varying so you are moving along this right so in this part of you are moving along these values right so in that part we will have f of ab is still bigger than or equal to f of xb for every x b belonging to that ball right so as a function of one variable it has a local maximum right okay at that point so f of ab as a function of variable x is bigger than or equal to um, the value at the point x b in that neighborhood so since f x ab exists f of x ab should be equal to 0 right so as a function of one variable it has a local maximum the derivative exists so that the derivative must be equal to 0 and similarly f of y ab should be equal to 0 so that is uh, just a um, conclusion we are putting back uh, so this is a necessary condition so this gives a necessary condition so um, let us define the point so definition a point x y belonging to d is called a critical point for the function f if like in one variable what are the possibilities either of the partial derivatives or both the partial derivatives do not exist right so one f x f y uh, either of this let us write either or both does not matter even if one does not exist uh, both the do not exist at the point x y. So, those are the points of non differentiability like in one variable Two, f x equal to f y equal to 0 at this point derivatives exist and are equal to 0 at that point and possibly some boundary points boundary points so these uh, critical points are the possible points where the function can have local maxima or minima as a function of two variables right and then again we will have to find sufficient conditions to check whether these are points of local maxima or local minima. So, let us look at uh, some examples to understand this a bit more. So, we have already seen that uh, example of uh, uh, x square y square. So, let us look at some other example. So, let us look at uh, the example of f x y a simple one x cube plus say y 4 x y belonging to uh, 
whole of all domain is the whole of all right so uh, partial derivative is exist everywhere so fx fy exists for all x y belonging to r2 and what is fx the partial derivative uh, is equal to 3x square f of y is equal to 4 of uh, y cube right so what are the points fx equal to fy equal to 0 implies the point is xy equal to this will give you x is equal to 0 and that is is the only critical point so for this function the only critical point is 0 0 so can we say at 0 0 the function has a local maximum or a local minimum by looking at the function so let us note at 0 0 so if i look at as a uh, let us put y equal to 0 so f of x 0 as a function of one variable right it is equal to 3 uh, it is equal to x cube it is equal to x cube right so derivative at that point 0 0 exists and is equal to 0 but we know that f of x is equal to x cube as a function of one variable does not have local maximum or a minimum at the point 0 0 on the left side of x negative x negative it value is negative on the positive side value is positive at the value at 0 is 0 so that implies that f does not have local maximum or minimum at 0 0 right now the partial derivatives exist at 0 0 right but the function does not have local maximum or local minimum so that like in one variable even if the function has both the partial derivative exists and are equal to 0 that is only a necessary condition that the point may have local maximum may have local minima it may not be anything like in this example so let us look at another example so fx equal to 0 equal to fy is not sufficient to ensure that the point is local maximum or minimum let us look one more example so let us look at say f of x y so x square minus y square for every x y belonging to R2. Right. So what is partial derivative f x? That is 2 x f y is equal to 2 y. So 0 0 is again is the only critical point. as before if i look at f of say uh, x 0 that is x square and f of 0 y is equal to minus y square right so as a function of the variable x y fixed as 0 it is x square right so which has a minimum at the point 0 right as a function of one variable and f of 0 y has a maximum local maximum actually a global maximum at the point 0 right so i cannot say for the two variables the function has a local maximum or local minimum but something more interesting is happening that whichever neighborhood of 0 i take there is a point 
where the value of the function is less than the value of the function at that point and there is another point where the value is bigger than the value at that point right for example if i look at 0 0 for x very small right so x comma 0 will be a point where the value of the function is positive which is bigger than the value at 0 0 that is 0 so and similarly for uh, if i fix x is equal to 0 the value is negative i can make it as close to 0 as i want so whichever neighborhood of 0 0 i take so in the picture you can think it as in this in this picture for whichever neighborhood i take there is a point there is a point say p uh, um, and there is a point uh, q uh, the point p is actually in this one x, there is a point p here and there is a point q here okay very close whichever uh, you want so here is a point p here is a point q right the value at this point is positive the value at the point q is negative whichever neighborhood you choose you can always find points close to 0 0 right with these properties so uh, the conclusion is there exist points p and uh, q belonging to every neighborhood such that of 0 0 say that the value at p is bigger than the value at 0 0 is that is bigger than the value at the point q which is negative. So, is it clear what we are saying? This function has a special property not only the point 0 0 is not a point of local maxima or local minima in fact something more is happening that whichever domain whichever neighborhood I choose of 0 0 I can find a point however small that neighborhood may be I can find a point where the value of the function is positive so that is bigger than the value at 0 0 and some other point where the value is negative right no no not x comma actually that is point q is here okay it's in the y axis right so y x is 0 so in the picture let me draw a correct picture a point uh, so here is the neighborhood here is the point p and here is probably the point q okay a point on x axis close to 0 0 value the big value is positive a point close to 0 0 on the y axis where the value is negative right so that is less okay so such points are called saddle points so let us put it as a definition a point say ab belonging to d is called a saddle point for f if for every delta bigger than 0 there exists p and q belonging to ball at a b of radius delta such that the value of the function at the point p is bigger than or equal uh, not equal to we should say strictly bigger because otherwise every point will be is bigger than the value at the point a b is bigger than the value at the point q. So, such points are called saddle points. Why are they called saddle points? Uh, uh, if you have uh, okay, so let me uh, probably draw another picture. This is a domain. So, let us look at uh, the graph of such a function. What does it look like? What does saddle point mean? So, uh, let me see if I can uh, okay. why it, I should not take it 0 0. So, let us skip that. So, let us uh, let me draw ok. Now, let us draw
look at this kind of uh, surface right this is uh, something that you put on a horse if you want to ride the horse you put a seat on the horse right you don't just jump on the horse and ride you put a seat and that seat is called saddle you sit into that and that looks like this so uh, it is a curve like this and there is a curve the other way around okay so if you look at uh, along uh, along the curve if you look at this red ones right so there is a minimum at in between right and if you look at this these ones blue ones then that point is a point of maximum so along some curve there is a maximum along some other curve there is a minimum positive to the same point right that's why it is not a point of local maximum or a local minimum because as close to that point there are points where the value is bigger and there are points where the value is smaller right but not only that right you can for every neighborhood if you can find points like this then it is called a saddle point okay so there are three possible uh, possibilities for a critical point one it can be a point of local maximum it can be a point of local minimum it can be a saddle point right or it may not be anything you may not be able to conclude anything about it the critical point so uh, one would like to find out uh, what are called uh, sufficient conditions for local maximum minimum and saddle points so what are we can find critical points by looking at uh, those collection of points namely where the derivatives exist and are equal to 0 and uh, looking at uh, points where the derivative don't either or either or, or both of the partial derivatives do not exist right but out of this how do you find out which are the points of local maximum or local minimum like in functions of one variable we had various tests we had a test of continuity test we had first derivative test then we had the second derivative test which were sufficient conditions to ensure that the function has a local maximum or a, a local minimum so for that we need to go to uh, second order derivatives for functions of two variables so let us uh, look at what are called second order derivatives so we have a function uh, xy going to f of xy xy belonging to a domain d So let us so say that the partial derivative is this. So suppose f x f y exists at a point a b. Like function of one variable, the first derivative exists. Then we can ask whether the second derivative exists at that point or not. So similarly, we are going to ask partial derivatives with respect to x and y exist at a b. whether we can differentiate it again with respect to so note that um, fx and fy are defined at a point ab taking values in r they are constant right so if we want to talk about the second order derivative derivative of the partial derivatives then the functions fx and fy should be defined in a neighborhood first of all otherwise you cannot talk about the derivative right ab and in a neighborhood of ab so let us assume they both exist in a neighborhood of ab that means the fun partial derivatives are defined as functions right in a neighborhood so let us say a ball of radius delta at ab they are functions right like for one variable if the derivative exists then the derivative is itself a function of a variable right at that point so now supposing fx exists in a neighborhood then it is a function of two variables so we can ask whether fx x exists 
and f x y exists because it is a function of two variables. So, it can you can ask whether it has partial derivative with respect to x and with respect to y both you can ask for both right. So, they may exist they may not exist. So, these are called so f x f x y and similarly f y y and f y x if exists are called second order partial derivatives. of f they are called second order partial. So, for a function of two variable there are four partial derivatives of second order. If you have a three variable function how many there will be f x f y f z first order derivatives then f x with respect to y and then with respect to z or f x with respect to z and then with respect to why? So, order may change right. So, for each one there will be two of them. So, there will be totally six par mix partial uh, six second order partial derivatives right of uh, a function of three variable. Now, a question arises if I take the function f find its so find its derivative with respect to so what what, what is this? find the derivative with respect to x and then find the derivative with respect to y. So, this is what we have written as f x y. Sometimes let me also give that notation partial derivative sometime also is written as with respect to x right. This also notation also we had introduced and then partial derivative of this with respect to y right. Now, keep in mind here we are going x y and here it looks like y x. So, in this notation you are going from right to left and this one you are going from left to right. So, first you differentiate with respect to x and then with respect to y, first with respect to x and then with respect to y right. So, this is also denoted as sometime written as this instead of writing brackets and all that. So, this is same as this these are different notations used for second order part. So, they are second order partial derivatives, but there is no condition there is no uh, surety. So, in general f x y need not be equal to f y x if you first differentiate with respect to x and then with respect to y then it may not be same as differentiating with respect to uh, y first and then with respect to x. In general that need not happen ok, the two need not be same. Uh, I think one example I let me state here probably you can try it in uh, later on yourself. So, uh, for example, if I look at f x y equal to x y I want ok x square minus y square divided by x square plus y square for x y not equal to 0 0 and 0 if x y is equal to 0 0. Right. So, I leave it as exercise for you to check that this function has got. So, f x y at 0 0 is not equal to f y x at 0 0 ok. So, that is an exercise that means it has partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y at 0 0 at every point near right near 0 0 also you want. So, second order partial derivatives also exist but check at 0 0 the two values are not equal right. So, one wonders is there any condition. So, one proves a theorem will not prove that. So, if f x f y f x y f y x right if they exist 
and are continuous at a b basically you want uh, for f x f y you need differentiability so you need continu will continuity will come automatically so the condition is the mixed derivatives f x y and f y x if both are continuous at that point then they will be equal then f x y at a b will be equal to f y x at a b so they will be then they are equal we will not prove that and will not be uh, sort of having much use of it so most of our functions will have that property so it will be okay right but in general this is a condition one should verify um, to ensure that the mixed partial derivatives are equal 